Halfway around the world With friends all around me Every boy and every girl I've worked hard and waited so long And now I'm in it for the win When I touch down in London That's when my journey begins So here I go I won't look back, the choice is mine, to be the best, the time is now, to make all these dreams last forever, so here I go, I won't look back, the choice is mine, to be the best, the time is now, to make all these dreams last forever. to do there I have nothing left to fear I can't stop thinking about the future I see my path is so clear so here I go I won't look back the choice is mine to be the best the time is now to make all these dreams last forever so here I go, I won't look back, the choice is mine, to be the best, the time is now, to make all these dreams last forever. Alejandra Mellafe, teacher Eduardo Aguirre, and love our teachers, be welcome. I am Daniel Hernandez, and I am a privilege and pleasure on behalf of Bio World and Oxford International to welcome you here today. We are delighted to have you with us, participating in our Bio International Summit program edition. Thank you for coming. I know that many of you have traveled online long distances to be here from more than 20 different countries. We are honored to have Ale Mellafe and Eduardo Aguirre with us today. Both are STEAM specialists in teaching and preparing young students. Teacher Alejandra studied to become a teacher of English in Chile. Also, she has a postgraduate course in education at the British Council. This opened doors and allowed her to win a scholarship in Oxford, England. Since then, her perspective toward English and teaching changed and helped her become the insightful teacher she is now. She has taught in three different countries, but most of her teaching career has been done in Cancun, Mexico. Nowadays, she works as a teacher and English coordinator, middle and high school, in Monteverde International School. 
This has allowed her to prepare and accompany students for the masters in a quite a successful way. Welcome, teacher. Adaptable, attentive, versatile, and passionate will be the adjectives which best describe teacher Eduardo. One never stop learning. This is the action which has ripened him to follow a wide variety of skills, design, marketing, business administration, finance, and linguistics are their strong set. His classroom experience ranged from middle school to university level, having thought these levels for a little over a decade. More grants him a good understanding and how students evolve and grow. This has been of vital importance when preparing and motivating their students for the master's competition. Welcome teacher, thank you for being here. Teachers, prepare yourself to challenge, excited and inspired. I want to remind you, if you have any doubt or question, don't hesitate to write it on the chat. And at the end, we will have time to get back in the answers and question session. And before I hang over to teacher Ale, I want to say this one more on behalf of Bio World, Oxford International and the International Summit Committee, welcome. It's wonderful to see so many of you here. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, teachers. Are you okay? Can can you hear us? Everything's okay. Good morning. Sound? We can hear you. We morning. Morning. Okay. Morning. Morning. Okay. morning. So as morning. we said, we are going to be speaking a little bit about our experience with the masters, and at the very end, we're going to read all of your comments and questions and answer them. Okay. For the time being, we won't be able to um, hear from you until the very end of this small chat. Okay. So let us begin. Okay, good morning, everyone. We're extremely happy to be here with you. And we're extremely happy to have, uh, to know that BO is counting on us to give this presentation. So I'm going to read some thoughts. First one is, I, it's like living real life for three weeks. This trip has changed my perspective on my future. I didn't want to come in the first place. It was, it was silly for me even to consider skipping. I would have never thought it was going to be like this. Okay, these are some of the thoughts that students usually have when they come back from the masters. And these are four. We can show you a thousand because we've taken many, many students throughout these years. So again, good morning. My name is Alejandra Meyape and I work at Cent uh, International, Monterrey International School, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, which is one of the six schools of Sandiga, Sandiga Education Group. I work as a curriculum coordinator in here, and I've been working with BO people for more than seven years, seven years now. Um, let me, do you want to introduce yourself? Well, my name is Eduardo Aguirre. Um, everyone calls me here at Teacher Edward. I've been working for, with BO as well for seven years, even though I've just been participating in the Masters for the past five years. Um, I am part also of Monteverde International School, and uh, we are very, very proud of the achievements and, uh, and the success that this program has had with our kids. Let me give you a little bit of the background, but a bit of our history. Um, we started participating in 2014, but I had all the information I knew about the Masters before that, two, two years before that, in fact. And I was very interested, but there was one slight problem that we had. We didn't have high school in this school, so we couldn't participate. But I gave, I remember having given the, the book with all the guidelines of master to our head principal so that she would get enthusiastic about the whole program. And that took me two years because she would not read it or she was not very interested or it was very hard for me to convince her. In the end, I did, luckily. And so 2014 was the first year that we traveled it was only me that year. I took six students. And from then onwards, I've just literally fallen in love with this program. I will never stop going to this program and promoting it because I think it changes lives, literally. I've heard students say, or parents even, like before and after the masters, I've seen them grow emotionally. I've seen them change academically in terms of discipline, I mean, in every single aspect you can think of. So for me, master's is wow. 
And then if I add, we add the fact that the BEO people support us, I don't know how they do this logistic with thousands of students that are amazing. You will never regret having taken this adventure and going to this program. Okay, so the students learn about the masters. Now, one of the reasons why the principal was not very enthusiastic was because she didn't believe in the program academically. She thought it's just going to be holidays. Um, in the end, once she uh, realized what was going on, uh, she, and she realized how much they learned, both personally and academically, she started believing in this project as well. Now, we have come up with a series of steps in order to prepare our students to get them what we call these days hyped. Um, so the pre-training, the whole process actually begins in seventh grade, three years before they can actually participate in the master's. So this pre-training takes part because I'm, I'm their English teacher for seventh grade. So since I have to be absent a couple of weeks for the masters, I tell them, you know what, kids, I'm very sorry, I'm gonna have to be absent. I show them a video from the masters. I show them the BEO um, promotional video and the students get curious about it. They start asking questions. And I tell them, well, you know, in a couple of years, you're gonna realize that you can also be selected, okay? So I also explain to them, as a school, many schools, what they do is just they, they open up this program. Whomever can will go. We don't do that. What we prefer is selecting. There is a selection process. So students in seventh grade realize, well, I have to behave for all of my middle school. I have to, you know, be good, have good grades, um, perfect my English. If not, they can't and they won't be selected. Okay, what, what Eddie was just saying is a crucial thing for us. I mean, it is an honor to be invited to go to masters. It is an honor to be part of the team that Monteverde will take to represent the school in England. So they have to understand that. And that's why they literally, they do behave those three years. Not obviously not every single day, but at least they try to, they want to go, they want to be in the list. Like the list is like super important, okay? So when I get them then in ninth grade, because I teach ninth grade too, um, I start observing them little by little, like who, and I imagine them over there. Okay, this guy might be good for this, this one for this, this, etc. And there's two, even three moments that are important for me. One is um, we we ask them to perform a play. It's a play. All, all ninth graders do the same thing. It's a whole generation, and they they perform this play. I mean, the play wonderful. It's a really good activity. But for me, for us. When, they, when we see them on stage and we see that they can stand on stage so they can speak clearly, they can articulate really well. And that means that I, I can understand everything they say and they have this strong personality to be there. For me, that is crucial. And for me, that one goes in the list, okay? So that's one of the things. The second thing is something that might seem a bit ridiculous or maybe not very important. I take them to the cinema, uh, which is, I don't know, I mean, not very maybe interesting obviously we choose a very interesting film we try to but the point of this is for example let me just explain how we do it we go to a mall a normal mall with the cinema there and let's say we arrive there at 10 o'clock and the movie starts at 12. so we say to them okay it's 10 o'clock you are free completely on your own for two hours you can go have breakfast, you can go window shopping, you can buy something, whatever you want to do. We'll be around, we'll be sitting here having coffee. And then at 12 sharp, you have to be in the entrance of the cinema to get in. We watch the film and then we go home. What's the point of this for us? We observe them. We observe them in a natural environment, in an environment where, they're usually, where they usually go. Um, we see the ones who do stupid, foolish things in the mall. <laughs> Because those kids are the same kids that would do exactly the same over there. Even though this is a country over there, no one knows them. So they have the feel that nothing happens over here. No one knows me, so I'll do something really stupid and it's okay. So for me, those kids are, no, X, no, 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 no. So that's why. And then the fact of saying to them, you have twice to be free and then come back at 12 sharp and they, you see them, they, they are sharp there. That is also a key factor for us. So that's how we start making our list. Now we do have a little help, obviously, after that. Um, we, I'm talking about, this is around October, like 
the school year has almost just begun almost we asked the bo people to give us a little help how do we do this we asked them to send us someone from the main office in mexico city we know that sometimes or mostly all the time you have have some very attractive English men over there, so a young men. So what we ask them is to send one of them over here, so they can come and give a presentation about the masters with both of us. So the three of us, this young man, let's say this young man is Tom. Okay, so Tom, Eddie, and I, we give this presentation. Um, we tell them everything they need to know about the masters, what time they wake up, what they have for breakfast, what they eat, what they don't, the classes. I mean everything related to it how much fun they are going to have. We show them a video of other years experience in the masters. And then Tom does this activity, which is let's imagine a mini, mini masters in half an hour, which he groups them, he gives them a mini challenge, and then they, they pitch for a minute and that's it. After that session, I promise you, the whole group or both groups, they really want to go to the masters. It's, it's, it's fantastic. And that's when we say, okay, it's October, you would really like to be in the list. So you have until we come back from the next master's, let's say April, May, to super behave, to have your grades going up um, and to make us know that you are worthy of being in the list. So that really helps us. So that's a tip for you. Okay, once we come back from the master's, the I, it's like we only get two days off to rest and then it's hands on and we start preparing for the next year. Uh, we get together with all the teachers of ninth grade with psychology and counseling and the principal of middle school and we start making a rough draft. This is around April, May. Okay, We start making a rough draft because by June we have to have an actual polished list. Now what is the actual criteria for the list? Of course you might think, well, taking a bunch of teenagers uh, to another country, you know, because it, it, it's uh, 10th, 11th, and 12th, right? So it's that age. So it could be very complicated. Um, things can get out of hand really easy. So for us, discipline is fundamental, okay? That is the first criteria that we take into account. Even if the kid is brilliant, even if he's got excellent grades, but if he's gotten constantly in trouble or he's got, you know, uh, authority problems, then we can't take them because um, we need someone who will respond well to, um, to authority. Now, besides discipline, once, once we've got that out of the way, we always tell them we need someone who can be a leader, someone who is creative, someone who is good at, you know, uh, mathematics and rational thinking. Public speaking, of course, someone who's got presence and, and who is very charismatic. And, of course, people who are really committed. Okay. Then the big day comes. We have the list ready. Everyone is super excited, but we don't tell the students that they're in the list. So this is a surprise. What we do is that we phone their parents and we ask them to come to an appointment with us. Parents don't know why they're being summoned to this appointment. So they come to school, they're clueless, they sit with us, and they think their student, I mean, their kid is in trouble. Is in trouble. Usually it's yeah. like, what did my son, daughter do? Yeah, exactly. But we say, no, you're here because your son has been invited, son or daughter, has been invited to represent Monteverde in our next team in 2021, let's say. So they get super excited, but they don't really know. They, they've heard about the masters, but they don't really know what that means. So we give them this letter. They open the letter, and they go, they, we, we say, you have some time, take your time, read the letter carefully, and then we'll explain the whole thing well. The letter explains very well, I mean, the whole process. And now, this is, this is a letter, basically, it's an invitation, imagine, not as much like as a wedding invitation, but it's like a nicely tailor-made um, letter for them that really feels special, and they have to read out loud, and, and it makes all the difference. And after they read that, on, I, I'm not lying. I've seen parents weeping, like tears coming out of the like, Oh, my son has been chosen. Wow, I am, I am so pleased. I'm so, um, so happy. I've seen parents taking photos of the letter to send it to grandma and the whole family. Okay, so even though the letter, I mean, they can take home, obviously. So after that, they're, they're super excited. We give the presentation, Eddie and I, 
we show a PowerPoint presentation with every detail, everything that, that the masters includes, involves. And then uh, when they're super excited, they've seen everything, we say, okay, the price of this is this. That's when <laughs> their, their face goes like, Ugh, like that. And but we give them a, a calendar with monthly payments, sometimes every 15 days, that they can start paying straight away. If this is, this is around May, so they have from May until March to pay this trip, and that makes it a lot easy, uh, easier. They think it's, at first when they see the, the, the big number, they go, this is unaffordable, this is impossible. But when we, then they see it bit by bit, they say, oh, well, I think I can do that. Let me, let me do the count, let me talk to my husband, let me talk to my, and I'll see what I can do. And in a week, or in two weeks, we usually have a response, yes, my son is going to go, or you know, no, you know what, we can't, but we'll do this for next year. So I, may, I start immediately making my list for 2022, this is a possible candidate for that year. Okay, so that, that's what, basically what we do. Also, during, um, during the presentation, we are very keen on showing not only like the experience on itself, or the optional activities, but everything that they're taking home, like the diplomas, the OTCC, the actual, you know, the diploma for just participating in the masters, uh, we tell them about the global talent student, you know, all these benefits that's, that we tell them, this is just enriching their CV, right? So students may not think, you know, long-term in future, but parents do. So of course, parents start thinking, well, this, this is an academic trip. So it is going to help him out later in life and they're high school students. So they want more in their CVs so that universities can accept them. Um, so that's, that's how basically we, we get them excited about it. Okay, then. Um... Okay. okay, so some students, for example, they approach us and they, um, I'm sorry, some students approach us saying like, what can I do? Am I good enough? Or what can I change? This is ninth grade. Some students, we tell them, listen, you are very disciplined, you are very diligent, but your English is not that good. So they will take up lessons, like not with us, but they, they, will, they will get so excited and so, so pumped and so, um, so hyped that they will go home and say, listen, I, I've got one year to perfect my English. And they start just bettering themselves. They, they want, um, we make them want this on the road. Now, obviously one of the questions, I haven't read the chat, but I'm, almost positive that one of the questions is, won't the students who are not selected be upset? Yes, yes, they do, obviously. Well, not all of them. Some of them, I'm gonna be honest, some of them say, yeah, I wasn't expecting to be invited. I'm a mess. Um, I'm super indisciplined. Like I've got a letter of conditionment. I'm, I'm one step outside of the school. So, you know, those are not exactly um, shocked, but some others are really, really shocked saying like, well, I really want to go and I'm very good English. I've got very good English, but I tell them, listen, every single teacher says that you do not respond well to authority. And over there, if I tell you be, be sharp 8 a.m., you have to be sharp. If I tell you stop this nonsense, you stop this nonsense. So uh, we need people who are responsive to us. Um, so then which brings me to when we start, then we start preparation. Okay, this is around October, beginning of October. That's when we start preparing the group. Um, preparation mainly consists of team building work, which is clue over there. Okay, because um, you can have very intelligent students going, you can have students that have different abilities of, about, on everything, but if they can't work as a group, as a team, it, it's a mess. Um, I can tell you a this, ha this happened to us. Um, yeah, this happened to us last year because we took a, a, a group of brilliant students who, on their own, they were outstanding. But as soon as it came to teamwork, they were at each other's throats, and they, we we got along with them. They respected us as teachers, but amongst themselves, there was no teamwork whatsoever. So it it was and, a massive disaster. And that was a bit of our fault, to be honest, because we started preparing them thoroughly academically. And we didn't take the other part account so much. I mean, the team building part. Um, we had done that other years, but I don't know why this year we, we said, let's focus more in academic and not in the other part. Um, and yeah, for us over there, you can imagine our faces and our <laughs> <laughs> um, disappointment when the, I promise it was the night before 
qualifying rounds that they did not have the presentation because they couldn't put things together. So when they had to present over there, it, we see it now and we see it as a comedy show. I mean, <laughs> we have the film then and we laugh about it we now. Could have, but, we, yeah. we could make that video black and white and it's basically like watching someone walking around with a mop and then he turns around exactly. and hits the other guy in the face. And I'm sure it will become viral. I mean, it's, just, <laughs> it's funny as hell, but in that moment, it was horrible. And the students were all crying and we were angry at the students. But then we said, okay, what's wrong? What did we do wrong? And it was all about teamwork. So that's for, for me, and that's a tip for you, is crucial. That, so now this year, our focus is obviously more in that area than others. Now, another thing that you have to take into account is like the cool factor, which of course you have to, if, you, if you're trying to sell this program to a parent, you focus on the academic and the benefits and the learning and whatnot. But if you want to sell it to a student, if you tell them, look at all the diplomas you're going to get, the student is not going to be exactly, you know, excited about that. So you have to exploit the other side of this experience, which is, um, again, the cool factor. And it helps a lot um, that I teach them in seventh grade and Ale teaches them in ninth grade. So we know them, you know, since, since they're toddlers really so and we get along just fine we're kind of like here at school we're like the cool teachers you know because if we chose to take someone who was one every school has it you know every school has the cool teacher and the better teachers right and right now you're wondering which which am i or maybe you already know uh in our case for example we couldn't take like the better teachers because they wouldn't be excited of going like oh but she yells at me all day long what am i why am i gonna go get yelled at in London instead of, you know, in Mexico. So that's also a factor. Get a good relationship with your students. Um, since the day we start preparing the group, we start, we open a WhatsApp group with them. And that's how we start. We already have this bond with them, but that helps a lot. Even though we're up to here with messages and maybe sometimes at 1 a.m., but we put up with all that so that we can have build this bond even uh, bigger. Now, regarding the teachers. Okay, so regarding the teachers, another tip. It depends on your school. I know that there are certain schools which is all male and schools which is all female. If you're mixed, like we are, uh, we strongly suggest that you have a man and a woman. Why? Because remember that doing the master's is going to be separate. So that, that way the students feel like no matter what happens at what time, I've got, you know, my teacher, like I've got Edward over here and the girls have got Ali. They don't have to cross around or get out of the rooms or, the, or their area. So they are 24 seven being, um, you know, we're supported, we're there for them, right? Another um, tip would be, even if it may sound selfish, I, we strongly recommend you to send the same teacher every year. Maybe if you send two teachers every day, maybe one of them can vary and be changed for another one. But there, one, the one has to always be there because you don't know what you're getting into until you're there. You don't know what you're really going to be. They can tell you, and it's exhausting. You, you won't sleep. Uh, the students will drive you crazy, etc. And you say, oh, yeah, I can cope with that. But once you're there, you face reality. And to go there, to do that to a person, I mean, to tell a woman, a teacher who has never lived it, tell them you, you're going to have this to do this, 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 and go her on her own. For the first time, when we have already experienced this, it doesn't make any sense. And this, I think many schools do this because we have many friends, teachers who are from other countries, which we see every single year. And we consider ourselves like a family, a BEO family, which is really cool. So that's really nice. We look forward to seeing all these teachers every year. That's, that's wonderful. Oh, but also we, we've taken other teachers and it's always the same thing. Um, the teacher who's never been there is absolutely lost. And well, just to basically reinforce, um, one of the most important successes of this program is that students must feel being cared for. Okay, so they know us, they trust us. Um, also, well, we do a little bit of like, I wouldn't say the good cop, bad cop routine, but in our case, for example, we have Mama Ale, we call her, like the students call her like Mama, because she's kind of like the motherly figure. And I'm kind of like the, the strict uncle 
So I'm the one basically in charge of discipline and going after them, making sure that they wake up early. So that dynamic can also work for you. Okay, regarding parents, we involve parents three times only. Okay, the first one being the time when we invite them to give them the invitation. So that we already talked about that. Then the second one is um, around September, October, October probably, we have a meeting, we invite them. Of course, this coronavirus area is, has been different. We've been doing things for the Zoom, but let's imagine it's a normal year. Uh, we invite them to school to, so they can meet each other to see who's parents and who, who are the, the, uh, the students in the list. And we invite someone from BEO to give some support and some formality to the whole trip. And they speak about the company, where they come from, when they started, the schools that participate, the countries, etc. So that gives a more, more it solidifies, recognition basically. and yeah. solidifies. Yeah, that, that's the thing. And then the last time we see them is, let's say, around um, a month, month and a half before we leave to the actual trip to, to the masters, um, where we. Like, uh, it's, we but it's when we read the. That's it's one week beforehand. Yeah. We've got the setting of the last session. Uh, we invite both, in this session, it's both parents and students. Um, and no, wait, this is, yeah, it's, yeah. it's in here. That's the other one, the next one. One last thing, yeah. yeah. Okay, so in this, in this session, I'm very sorry, that one got mixed up. In this session, we give them a list of suggestions. What type of charges to take, you know, uh, remind them that the voltage over there in England is different. And here we had one student who plugged in her, what was it, like her iron, like her hair yeah. iron, and the whole, the, the electricity of the whole building was, was kaput. I uh, would tell them not to take like clothing. We live in Cancun. So for us, formal clothing is shorts and sandals. So when we tell them pack, you know, your most comfortable clothes, they're like, oh, okay, fine, shorts. And say, no, it's April, it's England. You have to take warm clothes. So we give them all the, like the traditional tips. And what we do as a school, BEO has already a, um, like a, a guidelines and a set of, of rules that they have to agree to. We as a school have another one, which they have to sign. This we call the manual of commitments, the things that they commit to. And uh, the, in this, it's included also the responsibilities um, and the consequences. This will affect their grade. And I, we always tell them over there, you're not only representing your country, you're representing your city, you're representing your school. So because we wear the uniform, we've got you know the, the insignias and everything else. So it's like an extension, just like any other field trip. So if you mess up over there, it counts for school over here. Okay. Plus, we uh, make it very clear that whatever stupid thing they do over there, we are the ones responsible 100% mm -hmm. for them. So we are the ones to blame, not them. So that's not fair. And because we have already had this link, this bond with them, they understand that. They really understand that. So they are. They actually careful. see how Alice signs like responsibility for them. And I tell them, listen, you screw up, she goes to jail. You want that on your conscience? Um, and then also, and one of the very the most important rules, and this is our top tip, um, the backpack. You know, for the masters, I think that for every program uh, from BEO, there's, there's a different backpack, right? For the WE and for the British English Olympics. For the masters, we also get a backpack. And usually our students are like, oh, but I've got this really nice Gucci bag. And how am I not going to take my, you know, this one? And it's like, I'm very sorry, that pack, backpack will become an extension of their body it's absolutely prohibited for them to be out of campus without their backpack because it happens and it happens very often. You're walking as a group in the middle of London and someone is just stunned at St. Paul's Cathedral. They take pictures and pictures and pictures and then they realize, oh crap, where is my team? But these backpacks are so flashy. I'm not gonna say they're pretty. They're not. They're not, no, they're not. They're not. <laughs> But they're very flashy, they're very recognizable. So the student immediately looks at, the, at them and says, there they are. And so far, and I knock on wood, we've never lost a student over there. We've had students from other schools approaching us because they see our packs and say, okay, so they're part of the program, can you help us? So that 
I really, really strongly suggest that everyone, um, every student, even us teachers, yeah. we never remove the backlash. We practically sleep with it. All those things are said in that meeting. In that, that's the last meeting with the parents that we, I was saying, uh, I was talking about. And in that meeting, we open a WhatsApp group with the parents. Uh, not before that, because otherwise we drive ourselves crazy. But in that meeting, we do. And so we have, we start making this bond with the parents as well. And we never lose touch with them, even through, I mean, the whole trip, well, I'm the one responsible of texting them all the time, sending them photos of their kids because the kids do not communicate with them because they're having fun, obviously. They're, they're busy having fun. So we do that part. And I give some, some sort of a summary of every day's activity, what they've done, etc., which is also super important. Okay, and in terms of the students, we're talking about, you know, the teachers, the parents, the students, we begin working with them um, because just after this, um, the whole list is done, BEO every year asks for the school to send a presentation video. It's supposed to be like a 60-second video representing the team and the school. This is an excellent opportunity because I cannot stress enough, teamwork is fundamental. So it, we are now taking this as an opportunity, like you're gonna have to start working together ASAP, okay? And we've seen other schools saying, no, why, why are you doing this video? I mean, it takes time, I, we don't have time, etc." But again, for us, I mean, it's crucial. It's the first time you see them really working for the masters and together. So again, crucial. Okay, then the big day comes, it's when we fly, we meet at the airport. If they do not have the, hand, the backpack with them, I'm sorry, the mother has to rush home and get the backpack because otherwise they will not come with us. It's as simple as that. We've done it, we've done it. So that's how things go. Um, so they have their backpack and once they get on that plane, once we all get on that plane, those kids are your responsibility 100%. Even though, of course, you've got all the support from VO people who are extremely helpful over there. but. You don't go there on holidays, teachers. You really don't. You go there to take care of your kids and to work with them. Maybe not work and solve the problem, the, the academic part, because that's their job, but you have to guide them, guide them, and you have to be with them 24-7, that's for sure. If you Some have, exceptions, obviously. Yeah, but if you have hobby. a student who's feeling ill at 1 a.m. in the morning, you can't just ignore him knocking on the door and say, eh, I'll solve it tomorrow. No, you have to be... I always compare, um, I don't know, some of you might have families. I always compare to having a holiday with your family and your kids. You know, as, 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 uh, as a father or as a mother, you don't come back well rested because you were running after the kids. You come back even more tired. It's something like that, but it's still good fun. And it's still something enriching, both for the kids and yourself. Now, once you're there, one thing we all... I, I think we can all agree, everyone hates meetings, especially meetings which could be emails. Um, <laughs> I personally do. But over there, it's one of the few places and the few organizations who hold meetings which are actually useful. So I will tell you, attend all meetings because there's always useful information. There's tips, there's schedules, there's they organize their votes they you know it, it is really 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 useful uh, in that i mean obviously the two of us maybe may go to or attend these meetings maybe the first week then after that we are so tired but so extremely tired that that's the event the advantage of having two teachers okay you go today and i'll go tomorrow and i'll have some sleep because honestly i haven't slept in four days okay mm. so that that also helps a lot okay punctuality is strongly reinforced we tell the kids um, sometimes what has happened is that if a kid won't wake up, we will uh, get up close to the uh, staff of the BEO. Listen, is there going to be someone here that I can leave you, you know, in charge of this kid? Many times there are people who stay behind in campus. So they say, yeah, go ahead. Some other times uh, there's no one there, but we have actually, I will confess this, we have left behind students in field trip, like in the London field trip we've left them behind and they wake up like two hours after like where are you teacher i'm very sorry you're locked inside campus you know this guy is just in the common room go to him and he's gonna sort you out but you won't you missed london because in our case here in cancun we're very relaxed with punctuality i think all of mexico but here in cancun it's 
it's a it's a problem it's an issue um so that is something that we have to remind them all every every year also one of the good things um is that they're not allowed to wander off on their own there's curfew hours uh there's people there's there's video staff there's um security guards they're not allowed to be on their own are we doing in time we okay. need to hurry up okay okay then um uh, after okay we, we're back from the masters we're either very happy or not very happy but we're back in general we're very happy because the experience is always going to be amazing now we have two other activities when we come back so it doesn't it doesn't end there they come back and we ask the students to make a video of the whole experience a beautiful super exciting video that really reflects their emotions and what they felt there and, and how how it was to experience the whole thing um they do that and I, we also ask them to rehearse the presentation again because they're going to pitch for our students so they we settle uh, a date they present to ninth graders who are already motivated because they're in the list you know they want to know whether they're in the list for the next one um ninth graders and all of high school um and they show the video that they've done and that same day in the evening we invite parents to a tea party we make it as english as possible with the union flag uh, uh, union jack flags etc uh we we really definitely serve some tea we have some nice china etc and these kids um pitch for their parents because they really want to parents want to see what they've done over there um they show the video we give them the microphone and each of them speak about what they did for the talent for the project they speak about they give a testimony of the whole experience they say thank you to their parents which is quite an emotional moment and we give the certificates that bio has given to us we give them we take photos and there i say okay masters 2019 has officially been closed thank you <coughs> etc and everyone cries and everyone is super emotional etc so that, that's what happens and that's basically like the closure and the next week we started all over again the next, next week would be the invitations for night rest of high school again so that's how the whole cycle goes now any right. questions we are done um if you have doubts if you are a new school and you have doubts whether to participate or not if you're afraid if you don't know whether your kids are going to be good enough uh, to be there to participate to take the talent uh, do do not i mean do not be afraid they will do as best as they can and if they continue going to this competition they'll get better and you will get better as teachers training them and in terms of discipline all these things that we have said to you worked wonders for us they really work so do not be afraid you will not regret it you will experience something that you have never experienced before that you will remember for the rest of your life so that would be my last advice if you have any questions okay right now we I'm don't have a lot of a lot of time but we have 10 minutes that's, oh, okay. that's more than okay. mr daniel correct me if i'm wrong we still have 10 minutes for questions yeah and don't worry for that teacher that's great uh, well, we have a, a one question on the chat. How many okay. students are your school? I've got a couple of questions uh, in the chat. Let me just answer them really quickly. Okay, so um, it says from Nelly Enriquez, how many students are in your school? Um, if you're asking for the whole school, I'm guessing you're asking for the masters. We don't have that many kids. We have 105? 115 in, 115 in high, high school. school. So the selection, the team, is made from those 115. Yeah. Uh, well, but in reality, it's just a generation from nine, and our generations are really small. We're talking about 50 students. So that's that's. Um, so let's say 150, all in all, and mm -hmm. from there we choose. May, the list may might be 30 people or 35 people, and from there we start selecting them. People say no. People say yes, and that's. We've never taken more than 24. That has been a, a largest number with and we've separated them in two teams and the list we've taken has been three and the second year when i had three students so uh, you can see the range from three six 15 20 24 17 those are the numbers we usually uh, from rafael molon molam fi molam fi um because the main um all those teachers first candidates who normally cannot take those students that have the best characteristics because the main consideration is whether the parents can afford it or not two things that we've uh, seen first of all 
parents will get money from under rocks in order to give their kids the chance to go. We've seen it. And secondly, even if we know that the parents are not wealthy and that the family kind of like they, they've got scholarships and they struggle, we still invite them. This is the way we do things here at school. The, the, the masters, we take it as a recognition of the kid's achievements, yeah, you know, during ninth grade and, and well, the kind of students he is. Sometimes we'll, we'll include someone in the list that we know the parents won't be able to afford it. That doesn't mean he won't get the gain Plus, you know what, sometimes, it happened to me. I've lived the master's as a teacher for six years. Now this is the seventh year. And I lived it as a mom too, because I took my youngest kid to the master's. And I had to pay for it as well. And I had to ask the bank to lend me money. And I spent two years paying for that. But you know what? It, it's worth it. it. It really is worth it. I, I, seen, I saw the change in my kid as well. And I see it every single year. So, and I tell that to the parents, which helps a lot. And they go, oh, well, yeah, that's a possibility. I can do that. And they do it. They really do it. So don't be afraid of inviting someone that you know might not be able to pay, apparently. Okay, I've had that experience before. Searching for kids in the middle of London requires, oh, yeah, we've, it's, yeah, it's a but sea again, of people. You don't really need to search for kids. If, if, if you have disciplined them before, that's not necessary. You say to them, we will meet you in this place at, in three hours, and they will be there because you have trained them all through the school. I actually do. Know that. One of the jokes that I do, it's never happened, but one of the things that I do tell them is like, okay, um, I want you to ask for an Uber from London to, I don't know, Christ Hospital. How much would that be? And then they see the price in pounds, and they realize, oh, man, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm going to be grounded for a year if I have to spend this in Uber. So I tell you, if we leave you behind, you have to get an Uber cab. It's on you. So tough luck. It's never happened. But again, it's kind of like a joking kind of um, warnings that we give them that work very well. Do you ever grant, do you ever give a grant to those kids who cannot afford it? Um, well, as, a, the, as a school, school, we cannot. No, the school doesn't. Uh, BEO has given us a very small percentage sometimes. I mean, 10%, 15%, maybe to uh, divide into two kids, maybe 30% by divided in 15 and 15, but not more than that. It's we've, we've, the only two reasons what, why uh, BU has given it is if the student is like outstanding and we can prove it, um, and they've got like a tough economic situation, then yes. And the other one is if they go to three years, they also get. Ah, that's, that's another one. We've had kids who who have participated for three complete years, some for two years. Uh, and in that case, the third time or the second time, they do get a, a, a bit of a discount, yeah. Hmm. But the school doesn't, no. Okay, so any other questions? No teachers? It's just like lessons, you know, it's just like students when you say, do you have any questions? No, teacher. And then afterwards <laughs> you, get like, you get like five emails. What were we supposed to do? I'm stuck here. <laughs> Perfect. I think there are no more questions. So I don't know if Ali or Eduardo, you would like to add something? If not, um, you are very not, much. Not really. Um, okay. Not really. Um, I, I insist, I would emphasize again that you have to go for it. You definitely have to go. You will not regret it. I mean, we are the, I mean, we get it. We come back exhausted. We sleep for two days. Ah, that's, that's another thing we, you know, we didn't mention. When we come back, we give this, the school gives the students two days just, oh, yeah, just for them you, to sleep. Usually we come yeah. back like um, in the middle of school, you know, a school week. So the school decided that um, the student, both the students and teachers would get two days off just, just for the jet lag, right? just for the jet lag. Um, and because we are super tired. And we know that some schools don't do that. So they come, let's say they arrive on a Thursday and they have to go to work uh, on the classes on Friday. That's cruel. <laughs> that really is cruel. They have no idea. And that's something that bothers me and, and makes me really angry when they don't understand the pressure and the workload over there from the kids and from us. So that's something that maybe you should, um, if, if that's the case in your school, you should talk to your authority and say, listen, 
these kids really worked hard and we are destroyed. We really need to sleep. But anyway, we, yeah, we arrived destroyed once he came up really ill, etc. We've had every single thing there over there, but we are so happy to be participating in this. And we I are look so, forward to it always, every single year. And I always say, okay, this is my last master for me. Um, oh, that's yes, it. It's been that's three, it. <laughs> I was supposed to be her replacement. She was going to be like, this is it. I'm, I'm done. I'm not going to do it again. And then I start making the list and I go, oh, no, I, I have to leave this again. And then I go again and again, and I, I, I just can't get rid of it, and I, w I don't want to get rid of it. So, okay, we're happy. Mr. Rafael is asking: Has there been any, has there been any situations disciplinary where the BO coordinators have to get involved? I do tell the kids, like, listen, um, you see, you know how the BO in, in every event they've got the special jackets on, like really flashy, flashy. The red ones, the red the, and the green ones. Red, green. Well, they they've got this this visible cause. I tell them those guys are the ultimate authority. I do tell my kids. If that guy catches you doing something wrong, he can put you on a plane back to Mexico. Now, these tips, and I believe that one of the main reasons we were invited to give this talk is because we, as a school, have never had any issue. Not once have we had a single student being sent back. Or, I mean, yeah, we do have like the usual kid who's late or, you know, um, a kid who's trying to sneak in past curfew or, you know, the, the, the lovebirds who want to get away the normal usual stuff but our kids but in that case for example the typical the, the italian girls are the ones who cause trouble here because they always my our guys are always in love with the italian girls and sometimes they come to us and that's because again of the bond that we have with them I say, teacher please i need to spend some time with this girl i'm in love i will not see her again etc all the blah 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 you know and in that we ask them be honest with us and maybe we can provide a little space for that but don't just sneak out don't just do things foolishly mm. and they, they do they re, they respond they even respond well. even with you know they there has been moments when they come and ask us like i know that that school is going to sneak you know a bottle of alcohol teacher and they come to us and tell that's why it's super important for us to have a bond with students so that they don't feel they don't have to feel threatened Okay, they have to feel that they have the absolute confidence to say, listen, teacher, something like this is going to go down. I think you should be aware of it. And that's why we, we don't get into trouble more than usual. And I'm not saying that we take super nerds over there that don't do anything and don't go out. No, we've taken all kinds of kids. So, <laughs> so that's something. I think that's something. Uh, thanks a lot. Useful session. I have a lesson to teach. Okay. okay. See you later, Mr. Juan. <laughs> now, um, I think that's all on our behalf. Ms. Daniel. Exactly. Thank you so much, teacher. I think there are no more questions. So uh, thank you very much, teacher Ale, teacher Edward, for sharing with us a little of your international careers and advices. And thank you so much to all of you to being here. It's been a pleasure. I kindly remind you, we have eight conferences left today. I left you on the chat, the link to our website, so you can find the other links. And hope you enjoyed the rest of the International Summit Program Edition. Thank you and have a nice day. See you, teachers. Thank you. Thank you so much.